So, speaking of the Nintendo Switch, by the time you're listening to this part of the show, it will be Thursday, March 2nd, just actually the day of the midnight launch of the Switch. So, I thought it would be pretty fair to fill this part of the show with the recent uh, leaked patent from 2015 of the new Sony handheld. Um, so, have you seen the image? Uh, I think, yeah, I, I saw it. Right? It's like a tablet with like a half of the DualShock on one side of it and the other half on the other side. Basically. So, this the patent is from 2015. Obviously, nothing's happened with it, but it looks exactly like a Switch minus the Joy-Con. Just replace it with a PlayStation version. Yeah. So, are not they some... detachable on this patent? I'm not sure. Okay. But not really to talk about um, if they're going to do this exactly. Mm-hmm. But since it is the eve of the Switch launch, this just got released. Obviously, it was it was no accident. Um. I want to talk about if this could happen at some point. Not so much just this model of a handheld, but PlayStation making another handheld. Because personally, I think they're crazy enough to make another handheld. Yeah, I I don't I don't know because like the Vita didn't go too well for them, right? Like maybe it did in the in the software sales, but I remember the hardware numbers weren't exactly as high as they wanted it to be. Yeah, it wasn't. And they kind of stopped uh, doing first party support for it too, right? Like right. Pretty most, early on. The past few years, most of the Vita support has mostly come from Japan. Just because. In Japan and like Indies, Western Indies will often mm-hmm. port their stuff over. Yeah, uh, specifically uh, Atlas and Square Enix have been really good with supporting the Vita. Totally. But, and, um, uh, and, uh, NIS, right? Yes, yeah, them too. Um, especially because of the hype behind the Switch. Um, you could either draw that from what it is or just Nintendo making something that's so what people wanted, which I think that's probably why there's been so much hype behind it. But I think Sony obviously wanted to capitalize on it as at just having the option there, which is why the patent exists. And I, like I said, I think it was released just to sort of throw a punch at Nintendo and try and see if they could gain interest and see what people's response would be to having a PlayStation-like version of the Switch. Was it just released just now? Like, the patent? It, or I, th- I think it was last week. Last week, but it was registered in 2015? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I, I think Sony's probably looking at the Switch to see how it goes, probably, right? Mm. Yeah, and, and then I if they want to do it, they will. Probably. I mean, they have... They're leading, obviously, in this generation sales-wise. And yeah. by a decent amount, not anything insane. But, like, they're, they're clearly ahead. Mm-hmm. So they definitely have the opportunity to... I don't think they'd invest a ton of money into it. I think they're definitely going to push forward with VR before they do anything with another handheld. But, I don't know, what do you think they'd do as a handheld? Well, I feel like one? if you look at the Switch, right, a lot, part of the excitement for that thing comes from the fact that Nintendo is hopefully merging both their first party, I'm uh, sorry, both their handheld and console teams onto one platform. Mm-hmm. So you'd have a consistent release of games. And if you remember, like, the problem with the Vita was that Sony was instead caring more about the PS3 and PS4 than the Vita itself. So mm-hmm. I feel like maybe there's a situation where we look at we have the PS4 and we have the PS4 Pro. Maybe in a year or two, when those uh, mobile chips get uh, way faster and better, you could potentially see like a base PS4 level um, Sony handheld. Mm-hmm. I feel like I I honestly don't know, but I that... that'd be cool. Yeah, that could be interesting. What I Where my mind went to immediately when I saw this, and because the patent image released around the same time that PlayStation announced that they were going to stop the service of PlayStation Now on the Vita, and I 
it was either PS3 or PlayStation TV. So I think, like, where I thought they could go with it is create this PlayStation-branded tablet like Nintendo's doing with the Switch and sort of merge the Vita and PlayStation TV into a way that they'd be able to power things on at least the level of a PS3 and have the portability mode that the Switch has that makes it appealing, but work well with their backlog. Because I think if PS4 Pro is any sign, they're clearly using their regular console to push hardware and, like, develop things on that front, whereas, like, to compete with Microsoft, whereas I think if they did do a handheld, it could benefit from sort of being pushed as an indie machine or, like, be, sort of being what the Vita should have been marketed as because they definitely learned their lesson at this point. I mean, I hope they did, but if they approach... Well, if they learned the lesson, they wouldn't release another handheld, right? That's true, but, like... I mean, I feel like they'd still do it, though. Like, they, ha- they there's no reason for them not to do it because if this if the Switch sells well and it's a hybrid, I feel like they'd be okay doing a hybrid, especially since they've been pretty okay with supporting um, their hardware after uh, their newer model comes out. Except with the Vita, where, well... They just stop supporting that straight up. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean more along the lines of the home console. Right. Because they're, they're, I think, what was it? The... Well, the PS3 turned around in a real big way, if you remember, right? Like, mm-hmm. that had the maybe the f- worst first two years of a console. <laughs> yeah. But then, then started getting pretty great. Mm-hmm. Well, even during that time, it, uh, the PS2 was still being supported. Yeah, by, I mean, like... God of War 2 came out, like, March 2007? Yeah, and I think um, MLB The Show stopped being released on PS2 and I past 2010, I think. Oh, right, yeah. I I think probably, like, maybe FIFA 2015 probably came out on the PS2, right? Yeah, there was some there was some crazy uh, year of a sports game that got released on PS2. So, they just stopped manufacturing them, though, I think, like, as of, like, maybe a few years ago. Yeah, so I think if they did take a handheld approach again, I think it would make sense for them to focus on, if it was PS3-level power with the sort of taking the place of what the PlayStation TV is and what the PlayStation Vita is, I think since they had those products out and they kind of supported them, if they merged them together and made it in the portability factor that the Switch has, I think they'd probably consider it, and that's what I got from the patent as far as what it could be. So, Uh, I really feel like they'd wait until they uh, they have the PS4, they get the PS4 able to work portably. If Mm -hmm. that's possible. Where I feel like it might be because we were kind of having these conversations about the Switch before launch, before we knew what it was, about what... um, nvidia and their they are doing and stuff with their chips mm-hmm. but um i just think sony does doesn't want to support more than one piece of hardware you know yeah that's true and i mean vr support has been somewhat light right it's yeah uh, from sony's side of things it's been almost non-existent as far and as like aside from well, they, they made updates. rigs, right? They made rigs, and then they closed Gorilla Cambridge. <laughs> so Yeah, like, what else have they done? Besides, uh, they did VR Worlds. That I assume they closed Studios, some of the right? deals. Like, I assume they got Rocksteady to make Arkham VR. Mm-hmm. I assu- They did Drive Club VR, right? You just mentioned that. And then there was uh, Until Dawn. Mm-hmm. Uh, Farpoint did- is coming out in a few months, maybe. Is that a Sony game? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, yeah, I think VR-wise, it's definitely going to be interesting to see how they support it going forward because a couple years from now, uh, or when PSVR 2 comes out, I don't think it's going to just be focused on games. I think games are going to be more of a sort of secondary type selling point 
for just VR. Just based on what VR is going to be able to do. I wonder. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if the second model is just called Sony VR. Yeah. And it's compatible with PlayStation. There was actually a patent for a new PSVR thing. I don't know if you saw this. It was the other week. Because you know right now the PSVR uses the same technology as the Move controllers to track. Yeah. The patent was for the PSVR to move to a more Vive-like system. Okay. Where the you have these uh, what infrared emitters over there. And then the headset does the tracking internally. Whereas mm-hmm. now it's the camera takes the tracking information and puts it out to the headset. Which can leads to some pretty um, bad cases sometimes where it's not tracking 1-1. One, one. Yeah. So I I think that's more of a PSVR 2 thing than an update to the existing one. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't know. Because right now the tracking is a problem. Yeah, I think um, it's going to be definitely interesting to see how VR is handled over the next few months because I think that's going to give a very good sense as to what PlayStation's priorities are moving forward. I hope they support the hell out of it, you know? Yeah, it would definitely be awesome. because It I think sold VR... pretty well, I think. Like, they're constantly selling out the units they've been making. Well, remember a couple months ago there was that article that came out that said the reason they haven't been in stock is because of production issues? Yeah, I mean, these headsets are pretty finicky and small to make, I think. Like, to get those uh, screens or whatever set up and those proper focal lenses, whatever. Yeah, like, so it I'm... seems like a lot of work. Yeah, I'm definitely curious to see how playstation approaches because it's selling leagues above the vibe in the in the oculus i believe mm-hmm. and, and and resident evil like i think 10 percent of people that played resident evil 7 played it in psvr yeah i saw that that was uh really cool to see that's promising yeah um i wonder how they're gonna approach this next year though because right now both other competitors have new hardware on the horizon, Nintendo has the Switch, Xbox has the Scorpio, PlayStation has nothing right now coming. Well, forward. they just I, released the Pro in the PSVR, though. That's true. So like, I don't I feel like I don't know if they need anything, but I definitely think they're going to need, especially if it's not hardware wise of them doing something in the near future, which I don't think they will. They are going to need some big software titles coming. Well, up. I feel like uh, with the uh, with Horizon, they're finally making a decent case for why you might want a PS4 Pro. And okay, I feel yeah. like for PSVR, we definitely do need to get to that point. So I'm hoping E3 is where they they play it. They show us what they have. But if not, I would only start getting worried, though, about... I'd start getting worried when if PlayStation Experience 2017 happens and there's no <laughs> PSVR mentioned there. Yeah, because then that's it's going to be getting worried. into yeah. Vita territory of just sort of putting it on the back shelf. Yeah, because Which they can't do. Yeah, well, PS4 is sort of set. Like, I'm not expecting a ton on the PS4 side of software announcements at E3 this year, just because of what last year's E3 was. Of yeah, just... A lot of, like, way far out announcements. Yeah, so I don't really know how they'd do anything else but just follow up on last year. Yeah, I don't know what what is E3 this year. We'll probably get uh the what's their name Sucker Punch's game, right? I'd assume so. That's probably gonna be the honestly. I wouldn't even be surprised if they save that for PSX this year. Yeah, maybe. I, I don't know. It'd be nice if we finally got a date on Dreams, and if that was a PSVR game, that would be awesome. Yeah, that would be really cool to see. That could be something that would um help to push VR for them yeah. because Dreams last time they showed it was while ago right well they keep on showing it on media molecules uh, youtube channel so they okay. haven't showed it at e3 though since i think not e3 2015 i think we saw it there okay well so, um yeah playstation has a pretty good year going on ahead of it what exclusives do we have this year again it's like horizon and for confirmed exclusives yeah just horizon so far right horizon if it didn't already come out, GT Sport. Oh, right. GT Sport hasn't come out. Yeah, yeah, it's probably this year. It got pushed again, right? Yeah. It was supposed to be last fall. I would think so. Yeah, there's, um, I don't know. We're expecting, I, I think, is Neo Sony? Or is that just Koei Tecmo? Yeah, it's just Koei Tecmo. Okay. But I think, I wouldn't be surprised if something like Detroit was fall. 
Yeah, totally. I can see that. Yeah, so if this year for them is just uh, Horizon, GT Sport, and Detroit as far as exclusives goes, then that's decent. It's better than what they've been having the past few years. Yeah. But uh, And if they add on top of that Dreams for VR, then I think they're in a good spot to compete with the the mindshare of Switch and Scorpio. Yeah, I wonder but, what the Scorpio is going to be too. Like, because right now the only software announced for it is like what Crackdown, maybe. Yeah, I think that's and uh, I think VR. Right. I wonder how they're going to push that. Yeah, definitely, this year's E3 is going to be interesting for Sony because Nintendo has their whole everything that hasn't been announced that we know exists for the Switch to be confirmed. <laughs> yeah. And. Uh, Xbox has full they have to make the case for Scorpio, right? Yeah, so I have no idea what PlayStation is going to do aside from just software. Yeah, I'm excited to see how it folds. I, I think it's cool to see um, Xbox pushing that system out because that should be a decent competitive environment again, you know? Yeah, and I'm really curious to see how they approach it too. If they're going to try and do what Valve approached with the Steam Machine and see if they can do it better. Cause like I what, th- like a PC thing, or like you wanted to boot into Windows? Uh, kind, yeah, actually, because I feel like that'd be kind of cool. I feel like since of how this generation has gone, and uh, I think didn't Phil Spencer say it was going to end generations? <laughs> Did he? I'm pretty sure he. I think he said that at E3. He said this is the console to end generations. So if they take the approach of it just being a PC, that is what the Steam Machine could have been then I think they're, they'll be in a good spot just because if PlayStation ends up being the sort of dedicated console and then Xbox goes after the PC market and Nintendo's Nintendo, then it's sort of going to be a lot more dynamic. If you're going to sell your Scorpio, though, and make the case for an E3 and you show, like, Crackdown on it, doesn't is it really going to be that mind-blowing if it also runs on an Xbox One, though? Like, what can they do to make the case for the Scorpio if these games are going to run the same? Because with Sony, they have their PS4 Pro, but they never marketed it in such a way that it was like, you have to get this, because they kind of knew these games wouldn't have a mind-blowing difference. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I don't know. Yeah. Honestly, I bet you Nintendo doesn't even show up with a (laughs) direct... Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Like they'll if they do, they'll just have like playable demos of Smash Bros around or something. I don't know. Yeah, well, last year they just did all Zelda. Right. And there was like no direct. Mhm. Cuz they don't need to, you know, go to E3. I feel like they could have just announced like Pokémon oh. like in a small direct in like August, yeah. you know. Yeah, no, they they don't need to go to E3. If anything proved that it was the Switch conference. <laughs> yeah. They they can they can stick to directs if they want to. Yeah. <laughs> gonna be better for everybody all right so that about wraps up the first whole episode of the unnamed official playstation podcast for playstation follower uh so quickly i just want to pitch what the channel is and what it's going to be moving forward if you're new to the channel playstation follower is a branch of the wider follower youtube brand And here we just discuss all things PlayStation. We talk to you all. We want to get a good community going. Talk about our opinions. Talk to all of you. We release episodes of the show Monday through Thursday. The whole show posts on Friday. Hopefully we'll be able to get it on iTunes soon. But for now, you can get access to it on SoundCloud and listen while you're playing Horizon or Ghost Recon or Destiny or any other game. Throughout the week, the show is posted, but we also are going to be making other videos. Highlights of weekly PSN sales, reviews, breaking news, game trailers, and Let's Plays are coming too, and can be found already on the PlayStation Follower YouTube channel. And Omar, if you want to plug our socials, you can go ahead and do that. Yeah, sure. Uh, we, we're on Twitter. You know, if you want to come follow PlayStation Followers, I think uh, that's... Is it PS Followers on Twitter? Yes. Okay. PS followers on Twitter and on Instagram, we're a PlayStation follower. So yeah, feel free to to follow, man. I'm really surprised that we got that. That's really good. Yeah, that's a good name. It's weird though, because when I made the account, I'm pretty sure PS followers was taken on Instagram. So you think 
it was taken then it was given to you no i'm pretty sure ps followers like our twitter name on instagram i'm pretty sure it was taken but playstation follower wasn't yeah i also have a my own twitter you can follow me at at one up chun spelled how it sounds i'll put a link under my name on the video and yeah unless there's any closing statements you want to make about what we've talked about i think that about does it yeah i think we're good all right well thank you for watching or listening or doing anything subscribe and we will see you all in the next episode greatness awaits